I suppose that you are ready to try to solve some of these logarithmic equations on your own, right? So here are four of them for you to try. Sometimes the bases are already the same. Sometimes they're not. You might need to rewrite it in exponential form or exponentiate. And uh, sometimes you might have to use like some sort of property, product property, or something like that in order to simplify the equation first. So give it a try. Pause the video first. Pause the video. Give it a try yourself. Okay. So uh, let's look to see if you did this. Uh, you did this right. So here are the first two. So on the first one, the bases are already the same. So you just set whatever the logarithms or whatever you're taking the logs of equal to each other. A very simple linear equation, you get x equals 3. Go back and take a peek at what you're taking the logs of. Is 3 going to make anything negative? And it's not, so it checks out. You move on to the next question. Okay, so I could either on number 2 exponentiate with 2 being the base, or I could rewrite it in uh, exponential form. It turns out that I'll get the exact same answer. So 2 is the base raised to the fifth power is equal to x minus 6. Another linear equation, solve it, you get 38. 38 does not make that negative, so we're okay. Okay, the last two. The last two, you have to use the product property to simplify these first, to condense them down. So whenever you use the product property here with the 5x and the x minus 1, um, to make it into a simpler equation, which is one logarithm. Remember that the base here, the common log base, is 10 whenever they don't write it. So 10 to the second power, we got 100. And then I went ahead and distributed the 5x through the parentheses. It is quadratic, so you factor the quadratic, and we have two answers, a 5 and a negative 4. The 5 is good, but the negative 4 makes both of those things negative. It's undefined. Throw it away. Okay, finally on number four, it proceeds in pretty much the same way. And once we get down to the end, after we factor the thing, get negative 16 and four. Four is okay, but that negative 16 makes the logarithms undefined, so you cast it out. Cast it out. So what's going to follow here are some special cases. So here is a special case that looks like a quadratic. And we've done something similar to this whenever we had, say, rational roots. You're going to do a substitution to make it definitely look like a quadratic equation. So for example, I have e to the 2x minus 7 times e to the x plus 12 equals 0. We're going to do a k substitution and let k equal just e to the x, just like so. That means if I square both sides, k squared is equal to e to the 2x. Now I'm going to rewrite my equation in terms of k's instead of e's. Right? So here we go. I'm going to rewrite this equation. This becomes a k squared minus 7k plus 12. Right? It's right there. Right? Just doing my substitution. I can solve that quadratic. I could factor that. I'm going to factor it like so. k minus 3 and k minus 4. Okay. I'm not done yet because that's what k was equal to and we still need to find x. So we need to take this equation and go back and take the k's out and put e to the x in, the, in the, its place. So basically the original would have factored, whoops, would have factored like this. e to the x minus 3 times e to the x minus 4. Sometimes people could see that without doing the substitution and sometimes you can. The substitution just kind of helps your eye see what's going on there. Now, this is a product of two things equaling 0, so you want to set them both equal to 0. So setting the first one equal to 0, add the 3 over, take the natural log of both sides. It's a natural log of 3. Sure, you could approximate that if you need to. Then do the same thing on the second one there. Add the 4 over, take the natural log of both sides, and then approximate it. You do not have to look for extraneous solutions in exponential equations because their domain is all real numbers. It's only the logarithmic ones. Okay, here's another special case. What if what I am solving is an exponential equation. It has two different bases. Well, there's a couple of things that you could do here. You could just pick one of the bases and take the log of that base on both sides and then have to deal with the second one later. 
I would suggest just taking, say, the natural log or the common log of both sides and see what happens. Just watch. So um, I might go, oh, I need to take the log base 3 of both sides. Well, that will cancel out the stuff on the left-hand side, but it wouldn't cancel out the stuff on the right-hand side, and you'd have still some more stuff to work with. So it's, but it's still not that big of a deal. If I do it in terms of the natural log or the common log, I'm going to get to an answer that will be easy to put into my calculator. So just take the natural log of both sides. When I take the natural log of both sides, nothing cancels, but I can use the product or the uh, power property to bring the exponents out front. Now, this is, a, this is an important thing to notice that this whole exponent on the log of 3 or the natural log of 3 has to go in the parentheses when it's on the outside because I'm going to have to distribute here. I'm going to have to distribute that. So expand this thing out, and here we go. Now notice in this equation you have an x on the left hand side and you have an x on the right hand side. Now forget about the fact that there might be say logarithms in there. If you had x's on different sides of the equation you have to get them together, right? And Everything else on the other side of the equation. And that's what you're going to do here. You're going to take this uh, uh, log 7, the 2x times the log of 7, bring it to the left side of the equation and we're going to take the other one, the 5, log of 3 and bring it to the right side of the equation because it didn't have an x in it. Okay, so that's what's next. Okay, if these were just numbers that we knew, if these were just coefficients like a 5 and a 6, we could just add up or subtract those x's. But since we don't know what those numbers are and we want to keep everything exact until the end, notice on the left hand side they both have a factor of x, so you factor it out. So. Coming up here in a zigzag fashion, I just factor out an x on the left-hand side. And now, what's in the parentheses there? It looks complicated, but it's just a number. 4 natural log of 3 minus 2 natural log of 7 is just a number. And it's being multiplied times x, so to get rid of it, I just divide both sides by it. And so here is the exact value for x, if I wanted the exact value. Often, again, I would want, uh, you know, the approximate, the approximate value. Make sure, you, I mean, you're going to have parentheses like crazy whenever you type this thing in there, and it's about 10.929, etc. And if you were ever wondering, did I really get the right answer? What could you do? That number's in your calculator, because you had to put it in there in order to get the approximation anyway. Just put it back into the original equation and see if both sides are equal. On the calculator, that only takes a few seconds. So, one last case. One last special case, and that's when the bases are different, but it's a logarithmic equation. So what if the logarithms have different bases, but there's, there's like a, one extra condition. And one of them, one of the bases is a power of the other one. In that case, we can solve it by just taking a change of base formula, taking the change of base formula and applying it to the larger, applying it to the larger uh, base to turn it into the smaller one. Keep the smaller one, turn the bigger one into the smaller one. Let's take a look. So notice that I have different bases. I've got a 3 and I've got a 9. A 9 is a power of 3. So I can use this little special method here that I'm going to use a change of base on this side and I'm going to change it into base 3. And you'll see why that happens in just a second. Like why did I choose to do that? So choosing the, or using the change of base formula, you take the log base 3 of what you were taking the log of. So on top, I have 13x minus 9 divided by the log base 3 of your original base, which is 9. And what's on the bottom here is the whole entire reason why you did this, because the log base 3 of 9 can be evaluated because 9 is a power of 3. That whole thing is just equal to 2, because 3 to the second power is equal to 2. Okay, so that's just something divided by 2. To get rid of it, I just multiply the 2 over to the left-hand side of the equation. All right, now I'm going to have to use another one of my log properties. The 2 that's on the outside of the parentheses, that's going to come on the inside of the, parent, uh, the inside of the logarithm as an exponent right here. But the exponent's going to go on the whole deal on the 2x in parentheses, like so, zigzag fashion, just like that. Now, 
the bases are the same, so what you're taking the log of must be the same, so you can set those things equal to each other. And it is quadratic, so get everything on one side, factor that quadratic, and then find each of your answers. And now you want to make sure that whenever you find, like the first one's one-fourth, is one-fourth going to make either one of those negative? It's not. How about three? Is that going to make either one of those negative? No. So there are your two answers. So that's pretty interesting. You might see something like that again on homework and on uh, maybe on your quiz, perhaps on your quiz. Okay. So that concludes our lesson on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. Two pretty simple objectives, being able to solve those equations, and if I want to solve an exponential, I turn it into a logarithm. If I want to solve a logarithmic equation, I turn it into exponential. And uh, there you go, a pontificating velociraptor. Uh, pretty funny stuff there, pretty funny stuff. Which brings to, to mind Rowan's question here. Hey, Daddy, did dinosaurs do math? And uh, I'm going to say that they probably didn't, and that's one of the reasons why they're extinct. So there's a little uh, paleontology for you in this lesson too. So all right, I'll see you in class.